Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Grandma. I hope you enjoyed my series of the HelloFresh um, products. It was quite good. We had the shrimp scampi, the mustard pork chops, and last night was the chicken parmesan. It was very good. Even the salad, which I thought was a little odd, but it's okay. It was very good. We enjoyed it very much. <coughs> now today what I have for you is back to our, ba our cookie baking. We're going to make honey drop cookies today. So to start with, we need one half a cup of butter. This is a very easy recipe. You put everything in the bowl, mix it all together. I like those kind where you don't have to, um, you know, get one bowl for dry, one bowl for wet. Mix this, stir this, you know, throw it all in the bowl and mix it up. Makes life so much easier. And they're just drop cookies. You just put them on your cookie sheet and in with spoonfuls. So we have one half a cup of butter in the bowl. My nice, brand new, gorgeous bowls that Dino Brody got me for Christmas. Aren't they nice? Nice and deep for mixing up these heavy, when I make double batches of sugar cookies, they're gonna be perfect for this. So we have one half cup of butter. Now the whites of two eggs, <coughs> beaten dry. So I have one egg already separated and I can show you all in case some, somebody might not realize, might not know how to separate an egg. I'm gonna see if I can show you. I don't have an egg separator. You can buy them in the store and where the crack the egg in and the yolk stays in the middle and all the whites run out. This way, as <clears throat> the way I was taught, so you just crack the egg and you sep pull it apart and you just very carefully go back and forth, pouring the yolk from one side of the shell to the other and letting that whites pour into a bowl. When you're making meringue, you have you can do this, but you have to be very, very, very careful. You do not get the yolk in the bowl. Because when you mix the meringue, one drop of yolk and it, there goes your meringue. So there, I have got the egg yolk in the bowl. There it is. And, or the egg whites, rather. And it calls for egg yolks later, so I'm going to put the egg yolk right in those bowls right there. Just to have that for later. So it says to beat... The whites of two eggs beaten dry. So what I'm going to do is take my little whisk and I'm going to just beat them. I'm not too sure what beat them dry means. I guess they just mean beat till they're not so slimy and sticky. We're just going to beat them till they're a little frothy. Just, just go with your whisk around and around like this. Easy as it can be. Not a big deal. Well, there we go. They look pretty good. So we're going to pour that into the butter. Pour this bowl back here and pour that right into the butter. Put the bowl in the sink. Now we need one half a cup of sugar. I'll get my. There we go. There's one fourth and one half. Like I said before, my canisters don't hold my won't hold my big can, uh, measuring cup. So. And I use the half a cup for the butter, so I don't want to use it for dry ingredients now and get it all wet. All right, so now I need one cup of honey. Honey can be expensive, but we just got this nice big jar. Somebody had given it to us. Um, natural, natural Farms honey. And it looks like it's going to be delicious. So I'm going to use a cup of this. Just got to take the top off because it's a brand new jar. It's got that seal on it. It doesn't want to come off. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we need one cup of honey for these cookies. They are called honey drop cookies after all. So here we go. We're going to pour that right in there. Oh my goodness, we don't need to use up the whole jar here. Okay. Almost. A little squirt where there we go. There is one cup of honey. And that goes in your mixing bowl with your butter and egg whites. There we go. Put that in. Alright, it's a good tip to know, which I didn't do and I should have. A good tip is if you put a little tiny, um, wipe the measuring cup with a little bit of butter or use your um, spray, um, you know, like a spray butter, spray oil that you can get in the cans. If you do that to the inside of your measuring cup, when you're measuring something like honey or um, anything sticky,
sticky and wet molasses anything if you butter the inside of the, uh, the measuring cup it'll slide right out and you won't have any wastage okay so now we need three cups of flour so we're going to need get my two cup measuring cup here pour that in just two cups and then another cup and here we go we don't want it to fluff all over the place i'm going to get a spoon and just kind of guide it in there it comes comes out fast sometimes when you're pouring it like this okay so there's two cups and now a third cup very very easy it doesn't take a lot to make this it's not an expensive recipe honey can be but once you buy a bottle of it you know you've got it so that's okay so there's the flour the next thing we need is the beaten yolks of two eggs now we put the whites in now here's the yolks let's see if i can get that under there where is it where are my yolks is they're hiding on me there we go two yolks so we're just going to beat them with the whisk just like that a little bit stir them up you want to break them up okay now in they go and they go in their bowl there we go set this bowl over in the sink it's nice to keep your work area cleaned up while you're working it just everything all over the place it gets nicer that way okay so one teaspoon of baking soda so one teaspoon of baking soda there it goes when you're using baking soda you have to make sure to mix it very very thoroughly because it's not a good taste and when you get that not mixed and you get one piece of a clump of it in a one cookie it's not nice okay it says grated lined of lime grated rind of one lemon i don't like rind in my baked goods and i don't have a lemon i did use them all up on my other show so i'm just going to use calls three tablespoons of lemon juice so i'm going to just put in the lemon juice i'm not going to use the rind that's not going to change the taste of the recipe at all it's uh, gonna be all right. So here we go. There's one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, and I'm going to add just a little bit more to make up for the lemon rind, because just to get that little extra lemon flavor in there. I'm not a fan of having pieces of rind mix in the cookies, and then you get a bite of it. It's not to my liking. And most of the time when it calls for those, for lemon rind or orange rind, you can leave it out. If you like it, put it in, go for it. It's okay. So now that's all we needed. We have to just mix this up until it's nice. So it was half a cup of butter, the whites of two eggs beaten, one half a cup of granulated sugar, one cup of honey, three cups of flour, and one teaspoon of soda, and three tablespoons of of lemon juice and that's all there is and then you take these by teaspoonfuls and a buttered baking sheet or a parchment covered whichever you prefer and put them on and kind of mound them up maybe it'll make them little circles so there is our batter easy peasy now i'm going to take my cookie sheet and i'm going to Put a little butter on it with paper towel with some butter. I ran out of parchment paper sheets. I think I have one, so I'm not even going to worry about it. We're going to do this. We're just going to grease the sheet. Easy. I've already got my oven preheating. Whenever you want to bake cookies, the very first thing you do is turn on your oven. You always, always want your oven preheated before you start. So now, make sure I can, everybody can see this. We're going to angle this down a little bit so you can see my cookie sheet. There we go. The sheet's right there. Perfect. And you just take them by teaspoonful. Like you want to, like that. Just like that. And push it onto the cookie sheet and make it into... Use your spoon and give it, just turn it a little bit. Make it into a nice little ball. Make it into a mound. There it is. So you keep repeating this until you get your cookies on the sheet. You don't want to put them too close. They don't spread a lot, but they do a little bit. So, you know, you don't want them 
I have one great big giant cookie instead of a dozen cookies. Make little, make them go around the circle. This is a kind of a dry batter, which makes it nice because they don't go all over the place. It's a fragrant rat batter though. You can smell the honey. You can smell the lemon. It smells so good. So I'm going to get this sheet filled up, pop them in the oven, and while we're doing the rest of it, and I'll show you the next recipe we're going to do today, these will be cooking. These need to bake for moderate oven for about seven minutes. Moderate, that's 350. I never use anything above or below 350. And there you go, just like that. Nice cookies right there. They can be a little, you know, neater and rounder. It's just take your finger and just make them into little pillows, into little rounds. So there we go. I'm going to pop those in the oven. Okay, and we'll set our timer. I'm going to set it for six minutes first because cookies always cook at a different rate. And I just want to make sure that I'd rather add a minute or two than take away. You can't take it away. If you cook them too long, they're done, they're burnt, too bad. You're out of luck, throw them away and start over. But you can always add a minute to your cooking time. So we're just going to continue on with all these, get them all on the cookie sheets, get them ready for to put in the oven. I usually do two sheets at once in the middle rack. You want to cook, make cookies on the middle rack of your oven. And if you have these normal size cookie sheets that hold a dozen, they fit exactly two or fit right next to each other. Now my larger one that holds like 18, it's too long for my oven. So you have to turn it sideways, so therefore you can only get one cookie sheet. And what I did one time is I put that on the top and my regular cookies, my regular cookie sheets in the middle like I always do. And um, the ones on the top got a little extra well done because they were closer to the heat source. So we didn't want to, we don't want to do that again. I mean, I caught them just in time. I smelled them, but oh, that does not smell good. It's not supposed to smell like burning. And I took them out. So now, from now on, I do two sheets at a time or the one big one right smack dab in the middle of my oven. And that's the way I keep it. If you have success with something, you don't want to mess it up. And there's a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's the way we do it with this one. So there we go. Quickly, quickly got another dozen cookies. I'm just going to keep filling up my cookie sheets until this batter is, is done. And then you just alternate putting them in the oven. You take them out and you put them on a metal uh, rack, metal cooling rack. Let them cool for, you know, a couple of minutes and then put them in your cookie jar. Now I'm going to be making a couple of other kinds today. These are something I haven't made in a while. I have made these, but it's been a while. So I was sweating, looking through my recipe boxes and my books, trying to figure out something a little bit different. My favorite go-to is the peanut butter cookies or chocolate chip, but you know, you kind of get tired of those. And when my little grandsons are over on the weekend, Dino Brody's two little brothers come over on weekends and they always want to bake. And it's if I have chocolate, they will make chocolate chip cookies. If not, we make peanut butter. That's their favorite thing to do. The oldest one, the six-year-old, loves to make cupcakes. He has a ball. They have a great time. They each take turns pouring the ingredients in the bowl and stirring and holding grandma's hand while I use the mixer. And then when it's time to decorate them, I make the frosting. I different colors if they want it or put sprinkles on it, whatever, and show them how to frost it and away they go. Here and they are the happiest little kids ever, just helping grandma make cupcakes. And they get to take home the baked goods after they're done. So there we go, there. So, so far we've gotten three dozen, of, three dozen cookies out of this one recipe, which is really good. I mean, there's no point in making a recipe if you're only going to get like a dozen or so because what good is that going to do you? I mean, not in this house anyway. We're all snackers. And these, when you make cookies, um, instead of buying them, you know exactly what the ingredients are. You know what you're getting. You're not getting all those additives and all those chemicals and the stuff they have to make to keep when you buy the cookies at the grocery store. They have to add a whole bunch of stuff in them to keep them fresh so they last longer on the shelf. 
And when you make them homemade, you know, it's flour, butter, sugar, eggs, milk if it calls for it, you know, whatever it is, chocolate chips or brown sugar, white sugar, you know exactly what's in them. There is no preservatives. They might not last as long as a cookie from the store. They might spoil before you can, but you know, you make cookies and you have them for a snack. I give them to my older kids, my son and his girlfriend, my daughter and her girlfriend. We make them, I make them up plates and they can have them. So they really don't have a chance to go bad in my house. All right, so we are going to be able to get four dozen cookies. We have four dozen cookies out of this one batch. That's good. That's a nice amount of cookies. And there's one more minute on the timer. So I'm going to just hold off starting my next cookies while I take those out. And I can show everybody what the, the finished product looks like. They look like they're going to be very yummy. They smell good. I'm going to set this bowl over to the side. Mmm. Just tasted a little bit of the batter. Oh, is that ever good? You can really taste the lemon. So that's what they look like when they're just before you bake them. Make them into a little more of a better circle. There we go, just like that. All right, and my timer is counting down. Let's take one out and see how they look. Oh, are they ever nice? This is what you want. So that is the finished cookie it's nice it's uh they're, they're very soft golden brown on the bottom there i just flipped that one over golden brown on the bottom that's exactly what you want to see so i'm going to put the rest in the oven and we're going to start making our second batch our second cookie for today reset the timer here so six minutes i'm going to do seven because they could have used an extra minute. I actually stuck them back in the oven just for a minute. Okay, so now we have a recipe for butterscotch bars. So we're going to try those. These I have made before, but again, it's been a really long time. So I got my other bowl, my next new bowl. Here. There we go. Okay, so now for butterscotch bars, you don't need, I always avoided making these at first, when I first got them, or any butter, uh, the one recipe, because you have to go out and buy butterscotch chips. Well, this you don't. You use brown sugar, and brown sugar and oil and stuff, that gives you your butterscotchy flavor. So we need one fourth, of, okay, let me just, hang on a second, let me grab those other cookies out of there. I added just a little, one more minute cooking time, so I'll take them out so they don't burn put the other two dozen in i'm going to put these on my cooling tray so these are a nice soft cookie they don't get all hard and crispy they're not a crunchy cookie they're like soft little honey lemon pillows so yummy okay we got those on the on the cooling tray the rack wire rack there. So now we're going to make butterscotch bars. For butterscotch bars, we need one fourth cup butter shortening or vegetable oil. So shortening and butter. It's not butter butter, but that's what I use. I use margarine. So we need one fourth of a cup. Scoop that up. Do a one fourth cup measuring cup. Get myself a new wooden spoon. Put that in there. Easy. This is another one that it's fairly easy. You just preheat your oven. Shortening over low heat and need blending sugar. Okay, so we have to melt the butter. It says to do it over medium heat. Well, guess what? I'm going to put it in a little bowl and put it in the microwave. We don't have to go through all that dirty in a pan and all that. I mean, you have to dirty a bowl. But it's so much quicker and easier. And here, I've already put it in the bowl. So that's what happens if you don't read the recipe. I put it right in the bowl before I read it. So we're going to pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. So you melt the shortening. 
and then remove it from heat, you blend in the sugar. After cooling, stir in the egg. So we need three fourths cup of brown sugar. Get brown sugar out here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour the brown sugar in my bowl while I'm waiting for the butter to melt. And remember my tip from before, you always, always, always take your brown sugar and push it down. You always pat it, it says, it, sometimes it'll say firmly packed. This doesn't say it, but you do it anyway. You always pack it down. So we got one, three fourths of a cup. So there's one fourth, two fourths, squeeze it down, and three fourths in it goes. Okay, put that aside. My microwave beef, I can get my butter now and add it to it. And another thing when you do it in the microwave, it cools a lot quicker too. It cools much quicker than if you did it on the stove. So we're going to pour that in. It's hot, but not as hot. We're going to mix the butter and the sugar in together. And there you have it. So far so good, right? So easy. Melted butter. Mix it with the brown sugar till it's all mixed in. After cooling, we're going to stir in the egg. So I'm going to get myself another egg out of the fridge. Give that just a second to cool. And I got the egg out, and the next thing is a cup of flour. So while the while it is cooling, I'm going to measure out my one cup of flour. Give that one more second to cool. I don't really know. I don't think it makes a huge difference if you don't let it completely cool. It's not going to hurt anything. But you kind of do like to follow the recipe. Alrighty, so we're going to put our egg in. No separating this time, just put the whole thing right in. And we're going to put our flour in. Stir that up. Now there's, this are, these are bars, not cookies, so that's why there's only one cup of flour. I thought it's not going to make very many cookies that way, but it's okay. Add in, blend in the sugar, blend in, stir in the egg, and then blend your dry ingredients. So now I need one teaspoon of baking powder. And get my measuring spoons here. One teaspoon. And you know how I showed you to, to slide it across the top of the, the, the jar, and that levels it off for you. So one teaspoon of baking powder, one half a teaspoon of salt. Put that in there. Alrighty. And one half a teaspoon of vanilla. There we are. And remember the lid on the vanilla is always exactly one teaspoon. So it calls for half, so fill the lid halfway. You can get a spoon and measure it if you like, but this is just as easy. So there we go, that's vanilla. And we mix that all in. Okay, I'm gonna check. All right, so now we've got the vanilla, the shortening of the brown sugar, the egg, the flour, baking powder, salt, vanilla, and now this recipe also calls for half a, half a cup of walnuts. So I'm putting those in. You don't have to use the walnuts if you don't want to, if you have allergies in your family, or if you just don't want nuts in your baked goods. Um, we have a walnut tree out in our backyard. It's actually the neighbor's tree. It's in, uh, the fence across from us. But the branches hang over in our yard, and whenever we get nice walnuts, she was very nice enough to say whatever falls in our yard, we can have. You never pick walnuts off the tree when they are ripe. They fall, it's in like a green shell. Then the green shell breaks open on its own. So you can kind of help it along a little bit, but it's really better to let nature take its course. You let um, let them open and then you have the brown shell. So I cracked the walnuts ahead of time. So now we're gonna put this in a well-greased eight inch square pan. I'm gonna, I like using glass pans rather than the tin because for something like this, because it tends to cook better. We're gonna grease it up real good. I normally do this ahead of time, but I'm kind of slipping today apparently. So here we go. Now we're gonna put our, here's our mixture. Here we go. We're gonna put that into the pan. It's kind of wet and uh, sticky. That's all right, that's what it's called for, that's what we did it. We just put it in the pan. 
and spread it around with the back of your spoon and get it all in there nice and it has to bake for 25 minutes so I may not be able to show you the results of this just yet there's a timer for our last batch of cookies let me just stop for a second and get those out oh, these, these came out so nice perfectly baked they're nice on top they're just golden brown on the bottom and our suggestion for y'all is to always always set your timer even though you're right here and you think okay i can watch the clock i can watch in seven minutes i'll get those cookies out or those that those cupcakes or whatever you might get sidetracked the phone might ring or in this case like i'm making another recipe you get caught up in what you're doing and then all of a sudden you think uh oh cookies are done and they're overdone i have thrown away a lot of cookies over the years because of this so you always want to set your timer all right so there is the butterscotch squares in the pan ready to bake we're going to pop those in the oven again using the middle rack it's always important to keep it on the middle rack it cooks evenly that way it cooks nice and flat and even doing it on the middle rack okay so now what we're going to do we're going to make one more batch of cookies I haven't made these in a long, long time. These are orange cookies. Where's my recipe? Orange cookies, they call them. Now, what I have when I make these, it does call for a fourth of a cup of orange juice. Now, I've got some oranges. I've got these little mandarin oranges, these little tiny oranges, and we're just, you know, kind of gotten our fill of them. So instead of using orange juice from a can, I'm going to get my handy juicer out. Oops, sorry for the banging. I'm going to get my juicer out and I'm going to cut these in half and juice them like I did with the lemons in the videos from our cooking, our Hello Fresh cooking. Same idea. You push it down. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so you push it down on the top of that thing and you just twist. And with the oranges I have, and again, this calls for orange zest, I am leaving that out. I do not like the flavor of zest. I don't like the pieces, the chunks of, they don't really cook. And so they're in them, you know, you bite into a cookie or a bar and there's a piece of something. And it's like, nah, not going to happen. Okay. So we need a fourth of a cup. So I think probably these are very super juicy oranges. So I'm going to do two and then measure it out and see if I have enough before I do another one. They're still good to eat, but just that, you know, we've had them sitting here on the counter for a little while and I think, oh, okay, I've had enough oranges for now. We're just going to go ahead and do this. Did I say a fourth of a cup? Yeah, it looks like a fourth of a cup already. So I'll go ahead and do this last half we just keep twisting it just like this and that's what the inside of it looks like when you're done nice and empty if you see <clears throat> rub it against there get all that wonderful juice out of there okay so now I'm going to strain it like I did my other ones because we don't want the little seeds or the pulp I don't think it matters with the pulp. It really doesn't. Um, it's uh, not going to hurt anything. It'll give it a little bit extra flavor. So I'm going to pour this into my measuring cup, right over my measuring cup, in the little sieve, and see what we've got. Alrighty. Okay, so that gave us just about a fourth of a cup. It just about filled it up. So I'm going to go ahead and juice one more. Or half of one more. I'll just eat the other half. That's all right. And I think that'll do it. And this is an easy way to use up extra produce that you have. If you, or even just juice them and drink the juice. You know, if you don't want to eat the orange. If you want, just want to do that. There we go. Half another one. Half and get my little sieve and pour it in. Perfect. Half, a fourth of a cup of orange juice just 
that quick and I just spilled some of it so now I gotta juice another piece because I tipped over the banged into the measuring cup this happens in the kitchen you're gonna have spills you're gonna have messes not the end of the world you clean it up the only time it sucks is if you spill something and you don't have any more of that ingredient then you're in, you know it's like oh great now I can't make this bad this uh, recipe because I don't have the ingredient I should have had I spilled it all over my kitchen floor so there we go fourth of a cup of orange juice so what you want to do for this recipe is you mix in the usual manner so that means that all you do is put everything in the bowl and stir it up it doesn't specify to mix the butter and sugar together mix the you know no so there's we're gonna put half a cup of butter I do like to put the ingredients in the baking pan in order because then you're sure you got everything so we're gonna put a half of a cup of butter there we go one half a cup of butter right there in the bowl it goes and now the fourth of a cup of orange juice and that goes nice freshly squeezed orange juice can't get any better than that now we need a cup of granulated sugar which is white sugar so we're going to use my small measuring cup this is a fourth of a measuring cup so one fourth two fourths is a half three fourths and four fourths which is a whole you really kind of need to know fractions when you bake unless you just you know measure it properly but if you have a bowl like that with a smaller thing that's what you're going to need to do okay so we got the sugar two, and that says two cups or more of flour so what this means is that when you bake when you get all the ingredients in if you find that it's too wet of an ingre of a batter then that's when you add a pitch more flour and add it just slowly like you know a tablespoon or so at a time if you don't want it too dry it'll you know, ruin your cookies then you got to figure out a liquid to put in you can't back and forth it's a mess all right so two cups of flour and four level teaspoonfuls of baking powder that's a lot of baking powder but that's okay so this means that these are going to be a nice big puffy cookie where are my measure there's my measuring spoon okay so we're going to do four level teaspoons okay i'm going to show you once more in case anybody missed it you got your baking powder put your spoon in and scrape it on the edge of this let me get that better camera angle here okay you got this you put the spoon in and you bring it out and you scrape it across the top there's a little edge there's a little lip right right there and you scrape that across your spoon across there and it levels it off for you so there we go that's four level teaspoons okay and one egg that's all there is to it here we go one egg and there you see i just mentioned about always setting your timer and i forgot to set the timer for my butterscotch bars now they've been in the oven for about five minutes so i'm going to set the timer here it says 25 minutes i never do it that long i always do it a minute or two less just to make sure you can add a minute you can't take a minute away if it's overdone it's overdone if it's not done pop them back in the oven for another minute all right so we're just going to stir this all around and then what you do it says here to roll into a sheet cut into cakes set into baking powder and pan and cover with sugar and bake well see i don't cut roll them but you can roll and cut them i'm just going to take them by spoonfuls and drop them on the cookie sheets it is it's kind of like almost like a sugar cookie batter you can roll and cut them but you know that's a lot of work it's all right if you're making if you want to make sugar cookies that way these are there there's the recipe is the way it is it's kind of almost like a shortbread it's not a lot of ingredients and it's well, I'm getting in there with my hands as you can see and you just mix it up it is a very dry now see I would not have to add any more flour because it's just right it's not too moist at first I thought I was going to have to add a little bit of liquid because it seemed pretty dry but it's mixing up quite nicely now you can roll these out and cut them 
easy enough to do. But what I'm going to do is just take and roll them in little balls and put them on the cookie sheet. Okay, it says to bake in a meat moderate oven. Again, moderate is usually 350. It is in my kitchen. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take, now the dough is very, very, it's like a thick batter here, see? And you can roll it out easy enough. You could put it on a floured board and roll it. What I'm going to do is pinch off a little bit and make little balls just like this. And then it says to dredge them in granulated sugar. So I'm going to get a bowl. I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in the bowl. And dredging means that you just coat them. You can put the sugar in a baggie and pop the cookies in and shake it up. But uh, it's just as easy to do it in a bowl. You got a little bit of sugar in the bowl. You put your cookies in there. And these take about eight minutes to bake. We're going to go ahead and make all of our cookies. There we go. And you just take them and put them in your bowl of sugar. Get that in the camera. There we go. Put them in a bowl of sugar. Give them a shake. Give the bowl a shake. And what you have is a cookie that's all coated with sugar. And there's the cookie with sugar on it. There's the dough without the sugar. So there we go. Let's see. There. And then there. You can see the difference. You see the glistening on that of the sugar. So you put these on your cookie sheet the same way, you know, an inch or two apart. Um, they're going to puff up because of the baking powder. Uh, I don't think they spread. It's been a really, really super long time since I've made these ones. I don't think they spread. I think they just get nice and puffy, just like our honey um, lemon cookies we made. So we just keep doing that over and over. We get a big bowl full, or tray full, pop them in the oven for like six, seven minutes, and keep going. So I will... Put the first batch in the oven right next to the butterscotch bars and they should bake up very quickly the oven's preheated there we go we need four more cookies on this sheet to fill it up this is quite easy it's quite fast this is the kind of recipes i like especially i don't have little ones running around anymore at home but especially if you do have little children you want something that's quick and easy a nice snack for them, but you don't want to be like, okay guys, go play, because grandma, mommy's going to be in the kitchen for like three hours. No, this, I started this video about 10 o'clock, and quarter after 10 or so, and it's quarter to 11 now, so there. In 45 minutes, we got three recipes done. That's all there. there there's the ones that, that's what they look like when I, just before I bake them. I'm going to pop these into the oven. butterscotch bars and I'm just going to continue making my balls rolling them in sugar and getting the next tray ready and when I come back in a few minutes I will show you what the finished product looks like be right back all right everybody I'm back again and I just took the butterscotch bars out of the oven that's what they look like all baked yummy with the walnuts showing through and the orange cookies came out like this I just took them out of the oven. They're nice and brown on the bottom. There we go. Nice and brown on the bottom. And they did puff up to almost like the uh, the lemon cookies did. But there, there we go. Beautiful, round, nicely brown cookie. They did take um, 10 minutes to bake in my oven. So you always have to just watch your oven time. It didn't say on the recipe how long to bake them for. It just said bake moderate oven until they're golden brown. So you kind of get just got to play with times. It did take me 10 minutes. Okay, so, and uh, while that was baking, I got all my dishes done. So my kitchen cleaned up. And I didn't realize that when I made my earlier videos, if you all had seen them, I would make something. And then the next video, I would reveal what it looks like. I did not realize that I could just hit stop recording for a minute. Um, it was... Uh, I'm just using my tablet. I don't have a big fancy camera to film all these things. I'm just using my tablet 
and put my camera and recording it and then uploading it to YouTube. So I tried it and I was like, okay, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it does. So that's what I did. I paused it, waited till everything was done to reveal. So now you go get a cookie, go get a butterscotch bar, pop over to reading with grandma and have a cookie and a glass of milk and enjoy a story, which will I will be putting on a couple more today. That my mother, who is almost 91, she just wrote five more stories and mailed them to us. So pop over and, and listen to the nice adventures that she wrote. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.